Since the launch of this show, we've dedicated ourselves to shining a spotlight on cases involving missing black women and girls every week. Cases that largely go ignored in the media and as a result don't get the resources or the sense of urgency they need from law enforcement. But more importantly, we do what we do because they're our women and girls. So it's our responsibility. So when we reached out to the Black and Missing Foundation about wanting to help, they were more than willing to partner with us to bring you, the viewers, stories and cases of families still in need of help to find their loved ones and bring them back home. Tonight, we're so incredibly proud that the two amazing women responsible for helping those families in need through their foundation's work are not only getting the recognition they deserve, but their work on various missing cases will be getting even more attention. Sisters-in-law Derricka and Natalie Wilson are the focus of a new HBO documentary series called Black and Missing. In it, award-winning journalist and activist Soledad O'Brien follows Derricka and Natalie as they bring much-needed attention to overlooked cases and the struggles many black families encounter when trying to get support from law enforcement. The docuseries debuts on HBO Tuesday, November 23rd. And we're honored again to have all three of these inspiring women with us tonight. So Lynette O'Brien is joining us from New York, Derricka and Natalie Wilson from Maryland. Soledad first, welcome to the show. Glad to have you. Derricka, Natalie, always great seeing you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Great seeing you again. So we know the disparities concerning the attention given to cases of missing black people became a big story in mainstream media earlier this year, but all three of you have been at this for years. Soledad, tell us when and why you decided to take a look at this issue and how you linked up with Derek and Natalie. Yeah, you know, I, I think I first discovered them when they were winning all kinds of award for their groundbreaking grassroots work. So I, I knew about them before we had the opportunity to uh, go to them and say, hey, we are interested in doing a documentary on the work that you're doing. But as a reporter who's been at it for 30 some odd years, listen, I covered all of those cases that were very, very high profile. I have been one of the 90 reporters with a mic in hand saying, we're standing one and a half miles away from this, you know, the house where this young woman, usually a white woman, uh, has gone missing and, and been on that story many, 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 many times. And so, you know, you had to ask like, well, where is this coverage for other people? I mean, on the same day that some of these famous cases would happen, um, there were lots of other people who'd go missing as well. What made it? So interesting mm -hmm. to the media for one type of person and completely uninteresting for the media as a whole uh, for other people. And so in all the reporting that I did, I, I noticed, you know, those who are missing. And then also I started doing documentaries, uh, Black in America, specifically Latino in America, where we would sort of tell the undercover stories about people of color. Uh, and, and I think that brought me to really about, I think, three years ago that we uh, came to Derek and Natalie and said, we would like to do a documentary on, on you guys. We, we think that the work you're doing is amazing. And while you're being honored a lot, I think the story is still going untold. And um, and it was a little prodding and begging and groveling because <laughs> they're busy, you know, like, and when you do a documentary, you know, someone's following you around with a camera a lot. Uh, but they uh, but they agreed, and we've been able to pull together a really uh, fantastic documentary that's going to air on HBO on the 23rd and 24th. Well, Soledad, I, I know you can't get into too many details, but tell us about the, the kinds of stories and the firsthand accounts viewers will see when the docuseries premieres. Well, in a lot of ways, I mean, the work that you can see, right, you guys keep flashing the graphic of black and missing. I mean, if you went to the mm -hmm. website, you would see exactly what they're doing. And in a way, it's breathtaking, right? When you, you look at that graphic, like that breaks my heart because I, I look at those pictures and I say, wow, we have not seen mainstream coverage of mm, almost all of those people. Why not? And so I think that you know there are stories that are on their front page uh, of the of the website. Certainly, um, uh, Sharice Maria um, Riggins is one um, from North Baltimore. She's uh, been missing, last seen with her boyfriend, um, uh, Sherry um, uh, Stout, 52 year old woman who's who's missing. Uh, Kennedy High is a great story and a story that ended very successfully. A 16 year old uh, young lady who who went missing, and because. Uh, Natalie and Derricka were able to get in and get in early. 
I think it's a really good example of what happens when you do have lots of media attention and lots of uh, attention from law enforcement. You can actually make a huge difference. It's a really good example of why it matters and why the work that they're doing matters so much. Derek and Natalie, we've been working with you two uh, to cover some of these cases since our shows launched earlier, uh, since earlier this year. I, I want to focus um, our segments on missing black women and girls specifically, because I know that I get questions about, hey, why don't you cover missing black men and boys? Um, I prosecuted in the juvenile uh, uh, arena in, in, Dallas, in Dallas, Texas, um, before I went into the adult um, section. And I, I noticed how black women and girls are so highly disregarded in the criminal legal system. Um, they're not believed. They're, um, they're not seen as children, especially with regards to juvenile girls. Um, so I, I, I wanted to make it a point that if I ever had the platform that I would want to merge the two, not only just the problem of missing black women and girls, but also how the criminal legal system aids in that issue. And so that's the reason why I, I wanted to, to, to really just focus on black women and girls, not to say that black men and, and boys um, is, aren't issues that are uh, worthy of the attention, but specifically black women and girls. I want you, um, Derricka, to just bring our viewers up to speed for those who may not know, on what the Black and Missing Foundation does and why we need more organization like yours. Um, well, we're bringing attention to our cases that are often ignored. You know, we can name the Natalie Holloway, the Lacey Peterson, Chandra Levy, Casey Anthony, um, Gabby Petito. Our organization is focusing on all of those Gabby Petitos in the minority community. Law enforcement oftentimes ignoring our cases, labeling our children as runaways. They're not receiving the Amber Alert. When our women and girls go missing, they're associating their disappearance with some sort of criminal activity. And the media simply ignoring, um, mainstream media ignoring our cases because oftentimes the decision makers don't look like us. So I know Natalie will expand a little bit more on how it is so vital for our partnership with media and, and black mainstream media has been really good at helping us elevate our cases so we can bring reunion and closure to these families because they desperately need it. Natalie, we've talked to you quite a bit about the different struggles black families have to deal with aside from trying to find their loved ones and bring them back home. But when, when they're searching for loved ones, there are issues that come up such as mental health issues. Um, remind people how the Black and Missing Foundation helps um, in this regard. So at the Black and Missing Foundation, we really coach families and hold their hands through this process. As you can imagine, we meet them at the most difficult times in their lives. And they're desperate, they don't know what to do, and we are really their last resort. So we upload their information into our clearinghouse, we share their profiles on our social media platforms because we can't wait for the normal news cycle. We can't wait to pitch their stories to the press. And we just help them through our partners like the Black News Network to get their information out to the community. And media is so important for a number of reasons. And we need the media to care for a number of reasons. One, it alerts the public that someone is missing and it can greater the chance of a recovery. But as Soledad said, it puts pressure on law enforcement to add resources to the case. And that is so vital in helping with the recovery. All right, Soledad, Natalie and Derek, I've got to run to a break. But stay with me because after the break, we'll talk more about what it was like to put this docuseries together and what we can all do to keep the names and faces of our missing in the forefront. We'll be right back. Tonight we're talking about Tonight we're talking about the new docu-series Black and Missing premiering in just a few weeks on HBO. Award-winning journalist and activist Soledad O'Brien followed the work of Black and Missing Foundation co-founders Natalie and Derricka Wilson. All right guys, thank you so much for staying with me. Soledad, 
Now to you. You worked for some of the uh, traditional uh, high-profile news outlets for All decades, them, I and you're not afraid. <laughs> I, every single one of them, probably. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Every, I stand corrected. Every single one of them. And uh, you left in order to tell the stories that you really care about. Um, and you're not afraid. I love following your, your Twitter account because you love calling folks out, especially on their bias. And that bias with regards to missing uh, black women and children, that bias was readily apparent yet again when Gabby Petito's case was making international news this summer. Um, it was also very frustrating to see um, people in positions of power, people who have the platforms, uh, black women, accusing the media of their bias, yet not doing anything about it with their own platform. It was really incredibly frustrating. It was almost as if you just wanted to get attention for calling those folks out, but what are you doing to actually help remedy this problem? So, so why is it so difficult to get missing black people the attention they deserve, even from those in positions of power who look like us? It's something we really uh, look at in this documentary because it is underlying uh, every single part of the work that Derricka and Natalie do, right? One of the reasons they have to work so hard is that the system is kind of rigged against an interest. And, and they mentioned some of it, right? If you believe that a 10-year-old mm -hmm. black girl is more experienced and more adult than your average 10-year-old, how you're going to think about how you cover that story is going to be affected. If you believe every black girl who's gone missing, well, she's run away, and if she's run away, we just don't care, well, that's gonna affect how you think uh, a, a story will be valued. So all of the things that, that they have previously mentioned play a role. One thing I, I have to mention that I thought was really remarkable uh, was Gabby's dad, right? Literally, as Derek and Natalie say, the, the absolute worst moment in the, the life of, of his family. He said, you know, mm -hmm. I, we should, I'm paraphrasing badly, right? But he's like, we should pay attention to the, the other people, the black yes. women. The people of color who are missing that are not getting the, imagine being in a position, I mean, talk about having a platform and being in the, the absolute worst time of your life and being able to say, I want to take a moment to remind you there are other stories here. I thought that that was incredible. And whenever I'm frustrated by something Absolutely. the media does, and if you know, if I'm on Twitter, I'm frequently frustrated. Uh, I like to turn to those people <laughs> who are doing remarkable things, right? He didn't have to do that. Uh, everyone would understood if he did not do that. And I thought he used his platform to make a really good and important point. And so, um, yeah, all of these reasons, bias really undergirds it all. And so we, the only way that I can see that you fight back against bias is calling it out, literally pointing it out to people and saying, well, this is a story that needs to be told. We're going to do it. Derricka, uh, you launched the Black and Missing Foundation after a career in law enforcement. Really interesting. Um, we hear so often, though, from families on this show, uh, families that you guys bring us, um, that police simply just don't believe that their loved ones' uh, cases need to be taken so seriously, that they're probably going to, their loved ones or kids are probably just running away, they're gonna stay away for a bit, and they're gonna come back home. What needs to happen to change that dynamic? What makes law enforcement not take our cases so seriously um, when we're talking about children who have been missing for weeks on end? You know, I think that there needs to be enhanced training um, because missing persons isn't considered a crime in, in the eyes of law enforcement. And so uh, those cases are not really taken serious and there's, a not, there's not enough resources dedicated to to those individual cases. And we also need to look at the reporting structure. So in some states, you can report your loved one missing immediately, while in other states, you must wait 24 hours. We really need to change that law as well. It needs to be holistically across the board immediately because time is of the essence. So we need to look at uh, the classification of these cases such as runaway. Just do away with the term they're missing. We don't know where they are. So I think if we start looking at best practices across the board on how law enforcement responds to these cases and how they share this information with the media, it really greater the chances of a reunion because if the community knows who's missing, then we can close these cases much quicker. 
Natalie, talk to me about the significance of this docu-series and how it can draw more attention to all aspects of the work that you and Derricka put so much effort into. And, and how can we help? How can people at home who want to do something help? Okay. Well, this docu-series is really a wake-up call and it's a conversation starter on what can be done on the issue of missing persons of color. And I hope that it has a major impact on the decision makers that are handling these cases. So the series is really giving us an inside view on what these families are experiencing and the uphill battles that they have to face. So as a community, we need to get involved. If you see something, say something. And if you have a tip about a missing person, please report it because it could be your loved one that's missing. And we have to humanize these missing individuals because they are mothers and fathers, sisters, brothers, and valued members of our community. All right, Black and Missing Foundation co-founders, Derricka and Natalie Wilson, uh, and journalist, documentarian, author and activist Soledad O'Brien. We're so incredibly proud of you guys and the work that you guys are doing. Uh, we're rooting for you and we'll be watching. Thank you all for your time. Black and Missing, a four-part docu-series premieres Tuesday, November 23rd at 8 p.m. Eastern on HBO.